and welcome back to Project Healthy Schools. In our last lesson, we talked about MyPlate. I hope you can remember some of the things that we talked about. We talked about the five different food groups. We talked about energy in and energy out. We talked about what a nutrient is and how important it is to eat a variety of different foods to make sure that we get the nutrients that our body needs. Now today we're going to be talking about sugar. But before we talk more about sugar, let's talk about the word hydration. Who can tell me what the word hydration means? Well, hydration is simply the body's absorption of water. So anytime we drink fluids or water, it absorbs into our body. Now why is proper hydration important for a healthy body? Well, every cell, tissue, and organ in your body needs water to work properly. The body uses water <clears throat> to maintain its temperature, remove waste, and lubricate your joints. Water makes up approximately 60% of our entire body. Let's take a look at another diagram which tells us a little bit more about the importance of water in our body. So as you can see from this diagram, there's a lot of things that water does for us. As we mentioned, it regulates our body temperature. It helps us form saliva, which is really important for digestion. There's a lot of different things that our body needs water for. On the diagram on the right, you can also see that it's kind of interesting that our, the makeup of our body or the amount of water that our body is made up of changes as we get older. When we're an infant, our body is almost 70% water. As an adult, we're about 60%, and as we get to be an elderly person, it goes down to about 50 to 55%. So since we're talking about hydration and things that we like to drink, let's think of a few things that you like to drink. I put a couple examples up on the board. If you have any other ones, maybe think of those ones as well. But I put a pop and soda, which is something that a lot of people drink. Um, it, it obviously tastes very good and it's very sweet. Unflavored milk, sports drinks, and 100% juice. All just different things that people may drink. Now what I want to think about right now is which one of these would you consider, or which one of these would you consider to be unhealthy? Well, I'm going to say that pop and soda is definitely not healthy, and I'm hoping that you kind of already know that, but it tastes really, really sweet for a reason, because there is a lot of added sugar, and we're going to talk about that more soon. Now, unflavored milk, although it has sugar in it, it's naturally occurring sugar. It doesn't have added sugar, so I would call that healthy. Um, what about a sports drink? We usually associate sports drink with being healthy, like getting physical activity is a good thing. And when we're done, we want to have a sports drink. But the problem with sports drink is they also have a lot of added sugar, which we're going to talk about more later. So I'm going to circle a sports drink as not healthy. But what about 100% juice? Well, once again, although juice tastes sweet, it does have naturally occurring sugar in it, but it doesn't have added sugar, as long as it's 100% juice. So those are just some examples of some things that you may like to drink and whether or not they have added sugar in them. So once again, thinking back to my plate, so what do you think are sugary foods and beverages? What category of my plate does that fit into? Well, hopefully you remember that there is no sugar my plate category. That would fall into what we talked about as being an empty calorie. Empty calories, remember, are calories that don't give us any nutritional value, but they are calories and they do add to our the amount of calories that we consume, but they're not doing anything good for our body, and sugar definitely falls into that category. So why do you think we want to limit our intake of sugars? Well, typically foods that are high in added sugar do not have the nutrients our body needs and only contain those extra calories as we talked about. So to get what our bodies need, we need to eat from the five my plate groups, which are the building blocks for a healthy diet. So how do we know if the foods that we're eating have added sugar? Well, we're going to talk about how to find that out when we talk about how to read a nutrition facts label. So now we're going to talk about how to find out how much added sugar is in the foods that we eat or drink. To do that, we're going to talk about the nutrition facts label. Now, I'm betting you've seen a nutrition facts label. The nutrition facts label can be found on any food that contains more than one ingredient. It tells us what nutrients are in, are in each food, as well as the serving size and the calories. So let's talk about serving size. What is serving size? Well, that's one of the first things we want to look for. It's usually at the top of the nutrition facts label. Serving size reflects the portion most people consume of that product, not the amount they should consume. It is simply a measurement tool, something to keep in mind. But as you notice on the nutrition facts label, at the very top, the first thing it tells you is the serving size. Oftentimes, the serving size may not represent the entire container or the package. If this is the case, take note of how many servings make up the entire container or package. 
Another thing to look at when we're looking at the nutrition facts label and the nutrition information is the ingredients list. Now the ingredients list is separate from the actual nutrition facts label and it usually is down below. And it'll list all of the ingredients that are found in the product. Now an interesting thing is that the ingredients will be listed by the, by the ingredients that make up the most of the product all the way down to the least amount. So the first thing you see in the ingredients list is going to be what's mostly in that product. Many ingredients that we see in processed food and beverages are words we can't even pronounce. As a good rule of thumb, if you can't read it or pronounce it, it's probably not a good idea to eat or drink it. It's also a wise to avoid products that contain a lot of added sugar, since this can impact our health. So speaking of sugar, how do we know how much extra or added sugar or how much sugar in general is in the product? Well, by looking at the nutrition label, it's going to give you two options. You can first look at total sugars. Now, total sugars includes the naturally occurring sugar, <clears throat> things like fructose or lactose are naturally occurring sugars, as well as the added sugars, such as high fructose corn syrup. It's giving you a total of the, of, the, of the sugar in that product. Now, one thing we'll talk about later is our body doesn't know the difference between <clears throat> added sugar or natural sugar, so it's gonna, it's gonna treat it the same way. Added sugars are things that are added on top of naturally occurring sugar to enhance the flavor. So it's gonna list the grams of added sugar within a product that are listed on the nutrition facts label and all forms of sugar listed within the ingredients list are considered added sugar. So two things to look for on that nutrition facts label. How much total sugar is in it and then how much added sugar. And as we mentioned before, we're really wanting to watch out for how much added sugar is in a product. So do you have any guesses on what products that kids consume contain the highest amount of added sugar? Well, desserts and sweets are obvious ones, but breakfast cereals are another big one. Think about some of your favorite breakfast cereals and the ones that are really tailored and marketed towards kids. They have bright colored boxes and they usually have cartoon characters on them. And most of those cereals have a lot of added sugar. Yogurt is another big source of added sugar. Now once again, just plain unflavored yogurt does have some naturally occurring sugar called lactose, but a lot of the yogurts that they make add a lot of extra flavoring and that adds a lot of added sugar. And the last one is beverages. It's very, very easy to drink a lot of added sugar because a lot of beverages have a lot of added sugar and we talked about that earlier. So it's really important to watch how much added sugar is in the things that we drink as well. Now when we're looking at that nutrition facts label or that ingredients list, it's important to keep in mind that sugar has a lot of names. Now once again, don't forget that our body doesn't know the difference. It doesn't know the difference between the names. When it gets sugar, it's going to treat it the same way regardless of what its name is because it all acts the same in our body. But when we're looking at ingredients lists and looking for um, sugar that is in the product, some of them are going to be pretty obvious. You'll see things like brown sugar, or cane sugar, or raw sugar. I mean, you know those things are sugar. But then you'll start to see some little bit more complicated names. Things like corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, maltose, dextrose, dextrin, all of these things are different forms of sugar. Now one, one little trick is anything that ends in the, in, the, in the ending os is a name for a sugar. So like we mentioned, there are some naturally occurring sugars like fructose and lactose. We also have things like glucose, dextrose, maltose. These are all just different names of different kinds of sugars. So we're gonna dig deeper into some nutrition facts label with our next activity, which is called Nutrition Detective. Before you get started on that activity, you're going to need to download or print off the Sugar Shock handout, which looks like this. Once you have that, you're going to either work in groups with your teacher, or you can follow along at home. But let's get that Sugar Shock handout ready to go, and I'll see you for our activity. So welcome to our Nutrition Detective activity. Now, depending on where you are doing this activity, you're going to do it in a couple different ways. If you're in your classroom, your teacher will most likely have these nutrition label cards and you're going to be looking at your own group's individual nutrition label card to analyze it and be a nutrition detective to find out how much added sugar is in your item. Now, if you're at home and you don't have a nutrition label card, go ahead and just find a snack that you like to eat, something in your cupboard that has a nutrition facts label and you can follow along with us as well. Now, as I mentioned, you need that sugar shock activity to be able to do this. So make sure you have that and you're ready, and let's get started. Now, looking at your, uh, your sugar shock handout, let's do the first column together. Notice we're analyzing a bottle of Coca-Cola. So let's do the first row together using the Coca-Cola nutrition label on your handout as an example. 
How many ingredients are in this beverage? That's the first thing I want you to look for. <clears throat> Remember what we talked about as we look through the ingredients list, every time we see a comma, we know that that ends one of the ingredients. So go ahead and take a look at this one and count how many ingredients are in a bottle of Coca-Cola. Well, the answer is six. What names for sugar are listed within the ingredients list? Now let's think back to some of our tips and hints about how to find out what sugar is. Take a look at what's in the Coca-Cola and see what you come up with. So as you probably noticed, the very second ingredient in Coca-Cola is high fructose corn syrup, which is obviously an added sugar. Now remember, the ingredients are listed in the order um, by the quantity. So the, the first ingredient is what the product has the most of, and then the second is the next, and so on. Now the second ingredient in this is high fructose corn syrup. So the, a large majority of what this product is made of is sugar. Another question to ask, how many grams are in one serving? Well, remember, it's important to find out, first of all, what one serving is. In this example, the serving is the whole bottle, but sometimes in a larger bottle, it's important to take a look and find out there'll be multiple servings in one bottle. But for this example, this bottle is just one serving. So how many grams of added sugar are in one serving? So looking over at the nutrition facts label there as we're looking through it, the total number of grams of sugars is 55 grams. The answer is 55 grams. So how many teaspoons of added sugar are in one serving? So when we convert teaspoons from grams, we're going to divide by four. So 55 grams of sugar divided by four is gonna tell us how many teaspoons that is. And the answer is 13.75 teaspoons. So this is a lot of sugar, and I'm gonna show you a little bit later exactly how much sugar is in a bottle of Coke. But let's get going on your own Nutrition Facts label now. So go ahead and get in your groups, or if you're working alone, get your item and take a look at the Nutrition Facts label and see if you can fill in the second column in the Sugar Shock handout. Let's see what we found out in our group work. First, what items did we find on these nutrition labels cards today? Well, you might have had an Oreo card, a Gatorade card, Captain Crunch, or some yogurt with, with some sugary topping. So depending on which card you got, you had a chance to look at these, three, these items. If you were working from home, you may have found a different item. Looking at your ingredients list, was there at least one ingredient that you couldn't pronounce? Remember what our rule of thumb was on that. If you can't pronounce it, it's probably not good for you. Also, while we were looking at that ingredients list, we were looking for added sugars. So what words or what, what exact kinds of sugars were we looking for? Well, maybe you saw something that was pretty obvious, like brown sugar, cane sugar. But you probably also saw things like corn syrup. Anything that ends with the word os, remember, is most likely a sugar. Sucrose, maltose. You may have also saw honey or things like dextrin. So hopefully you were able to identify what the added sugar was in the ingredients list. The next question was, how many grams of sugar did your product contain? Well, if your product was Gatorade, you probably found that there was 34 grams of sugar in the Gatorade. Surprisingly, the Gatorade had the most amount of added sugar out of all of these items. And once again, Gatorade is kind of a tricky one because oftentimes we think that it's a healthy drink to drink after we do some physical activity, but it's really high in sugar and water is always a better option. So now let's calculate how many teaspoons of added sugar your product had per serving. Now remember, we take the total grams and we divide by four. So the Gatorade had eight and a half teaspoons of added sugar. The Crunch Berries, four teaspoons of added sugar. The Oreos had three and a half teaspoons of added sugar. And the Yo Crunch yogurt with m and topping had five teaspoons of added sugar. So once again, Gatorade was the winner. Gatorade has the most added sugar of all of these per serving. If you weren't able to use our nutrition label cards and you're at home and you found your item, compare the answers that we found from these items with your own. So we looked at five different products today and what was the most common thing between all of them? Well, they all had added sugar. So let's get a better visual of how much added sugar is actually in these things. So we're gonna go back to our Coke example and let's take a look at exactly how much added sugar is really in a bottle of Coca-Cola. So let's take a closer look at exactly how much sugar is in a bottle of Coca-Cola. So as you can see from here, as we get closer, that is the amount of sugar that would be in this bottle of Coke if we were to be able to see it. Now to show you even better, I'm going to go ahead and dump it out. But as you can see, that's a lot of sugar. So when we drink a bottle of Coke, please keep in mind, 
that we are putting all of this sugar into our body. So can anybody remember the four areas where we oftentimes find added sugar in our diet? Well, obviously the first one was just in desserts and sweets. We kind of knew that one. The other one to watch out for is the breakfast, our breakfast cereal, um, our yogurt, flavored yogurts, and then of course our beverages that we drink. Those are areas that we really want to watch out for added sugar. So let's talk a little bit about how we could possibly come up with ways to reduce the amount of added sugar that we consume in all those areas. So let's first talk about desserts and our, and our snacks. Now one thing we're going to keep coming back to is there's some really healthy substitutions that have natural occurring sugars that are really going to help us maybe cut down on these unhealthy added sugars. And that the big one for that is fruit. We're going to add fruit to everything to kind of help um, make up for that sweetness that we're missing. So it, in our desserts, oftentimes just having a piece of fruit will satisfy you just like having that sugary snack would. Um, but we can also decide to choose like maybe lower portions of our desserts or maybe if we're eating dessert every day we can decrease the frequency down to maybe just a couple times a week that's always going to help another great idea would be to make your own bake your own desserts that way you know exactly what ingredients are going in and you have more control over the amount of added sweetener let's talk a little bit about yogurt now now anytime we have a flavored yogurt it's going to have a lot of unhealthy added sugar so the best bet is to always go with natural unflavored yogurt now it has some natural sweetness in it called lactose but what's a great way to sweeten that yogurt well once again adding that fresh fruit will really really spice it up and make it taste a lot sweeter and hopefully make up for that lack of sweetness that you're looking for you know another big one is breakfast and one thing to really watch out for is is the cereals a lot of the cereals that we that are marketed to kids are very 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 high in sugar and we want to watch out for that so the best bet is to find something with not a lot of added sugar a little bit more natural but once again use that fruit to add to the cereal to kind of add that sweetness then you're getting a lot healthier options now other parts of breakfast that can be unhealthy are things like pancakes and syrup and those kind of things and we're not saying that you need to cut that out completely but if you were eating that kind of stuff every day maybe just eat that stuff on the weekends and really try to hit a healthier lower sugar breakfast the rest of the week and the last one, of course, is beverages. I think that's the one we have to watch out for the most because it is so easy to drink a lot of added sugar. And a lot of times things sneak up on us, like the Gatorade example. The Gatorade seems like a healthy option, but it's really, really, really high in sugar. So we want to watch out for that. So we want to look for beverages that do not have added sugar. Um, looking for natural things like 100% juice or unflavored milk are great options. And don't forget that water is the very, very best thing that you can drink every day. So great job today on being a nutrition detective. Let's get ready to wrap up this lesson. We spent a lot of time today talking about how we can reduce the amount of sugar in our diets. We've also talked about the importance of hydration. So we're gonna kind of combine those two things. So I have a challenge for you all. I want you to really try to drink more water. Since we've talked about how important hydration is to our bodies, I want you to challenge yourself over this next week to drink more water. Now, one great way to want to drink more water is to experiment with healthy ways to flavor it. Oftentimes we don't drink water because the flavor is too plain. But we've talked about healthy ways to sweeten our foods and we can do the same thing when we're talking about water. So I want you to look around your house and look for items in your own kitchen or in your fridge that you might be able to add to your water that would be healthy alternatives to help it taste better and to help you drink more water in the long run. So what are some ideas for flavoring our water? Well, I bet you've seen people put lemon in their water. That's a simple one. Adding a fruit or a citrus type fruit to your water will give it flavor. Now, the longer the item soaks in the water, the more flavor is gonna be in the water. So maybe making uh, your water bottle the night before and letting that fruit soak in it overnight is gonna enhance the flavor even more. Um, but outside of fruit, we can also add things like mint. If you like the flavor of mint, you could add mint leaves to your water. So over the next couple days, the challenge in your kind of homework assignment is to try a different flavoring in your water and then pick which one is your favorite. So maybe one day put lemon or, or oranges or limes in your water overnight, let it soak and see if you like the flavor of that. But you can also try herbs and spices, things like cinnamon. People like the taste of cinnamon, cinnamon in their water. Look for ideas that maybe are different than things you've seen and try different things. Don't forget, you can always combine things. Maybe you want to add apple and cinnamon because you like those two flavors together. It's up to you. But before our next lesson, I want you to try a few of those and be ready to share when we meet for lesson eight.
So that brings us to the end of this lesson. Just a couple questions before we go. What specific information do nutrition facts labels contain that help you make healthier, educated decisions about your food and drink choices? Well, we learned a lot about the nutrition facts label and hopefully you learned something new. We learned, that the, we learned how to read the ingredients list, um, serving size information, an amount per serving of macronutrients and micronutrients, and the amount of added sugar is really what the focus of this lesson was about. And which type of common foods contain the highest amount of added sugar? We spent a lot of time on looking out for those foods that maybe we didn't expect to have so much sugar. But do you remember what they were? Remember we talked about desserts and sweets, which are pretty obvious, but even things like our cereal, our yogurt, and especially our beverages contain a lot of added sugar sometimes. So we wanna keep an eye out for those. And now that we know how to read that nutrition facts label, we should be able to check that and keep an eye on that. And as always, Hopefully this was a, there was a lot of information in this lesson that you are hopefully willing to share with someone else. So think about one thing maybe you learned and share it with a family member, share it with a friend, share it with your teacher. Have a great day. I will see you in lesson.